welcome to another edition of King Crush Thursday, the series where we highlight and uplift Black men, because frankly, not too many people are doing it. My name is Val Gay, and I'm super excited to bring this brother to you here today. He is a well-known musician, an arts leader, an educator, a curator. Um, he, you've heard his music, you've heard him, you might not even know who he was, or when I say his name, you're like, oh, I can't believe she's interviewing him. I know, so please meet Mr. Gerald Beasley. Hi, Gerald. Hey, Val. Thank you for that lovely introduction. I'm so glad, I'm glad to be with you. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you so much, Gerald. And as we are shifting the narrative and your, our conversation today is one of on our way to 100 different answers, where we're creating a repository of six questions, same six questions, um, with answers for 100 different positive and successful Black men, with the hope of one day a young king who may or may not have positive Black male role models in his life to go to this repository and see the same six questions asked and answer by 100 different men in 100 different ways, and hopefully find guidance in that. And then for the rest of us who are neither male or even black to get a little peek into uh, this very um, diverse group of people who are often portrayed in a very myopic way in the broad media to see all of the various um, aspects of, of who you all are. And so I'm so glad that you are here to participate in this. And I'm gonna get started with the first question, which is, what does manhood mean to you? Wow, that's a great first question. Um, to me, manhood is a process, and it's the process of maturing and accepting life as it is. And that takes courage, it takes strength, and it takes maturity. Um, and also, being a man, it means accepting the role of being a protector, of being someone who's concerned about protecting uh, the inner circle, family, but also community, being being community, be involved in community and protecting, and of also accepting the role of, of, of a leader. Um, those are some of the important tra traits to me. And you know, I think the important thing to know, especially since it's a, it's a repository, is to accept that it's a process that it's not something you can develop, that manhood is not something you can develop overnight. But it takes, you know, some struggle, it takes some, some disappointment, it takes some heartbreak, and it takes getting knocked down and getting up. All of that is part of the process. Mm -hmm. That's great, thank you. Thank you so much. So Gerald, who and or what is important to you? Um, I think at this age, in this season of my life, I'm putting a, a higher and higher value on time. It's the only non-renewable resource, really, that we know. And so I'm, I'm becoming more selective about how I invest my time, how I think about my time, finding ways, not that I'm stingy with my time, but I'm recognizing the um, irreplaceable value of time. And so I want to make my time here, whatever's left of it, really matter and be involved with the folks that matter and the projects that matter. Uh, so, yeah, time is the most important thing. That's awesome. Excellent. So, Gerald, how do you want us to see you? <laughs> I would love to be seen the way my father was seen, uh, a man of character and integrity. Um, you know, uh, these questions are really interesting because I've been thinking more broadly about these subjects lately, like, and thinking about what kind of man I want to be. And I know that when I was a young man, I put a high value on what elders could teach me. Like, I always wanted elders to just drop those pearls of wisdom. Uh, and often I would I realized they would come up short in my eyes, but only because I didn't understand they were teaching me all along, not in what they said, but how they carry themselves. So for me, I want to exhibit the right character and integrity. I want to set that example, you know, beyond what my words are, beyond what I say my commitments are, 
but if if people think of me as someone who really doesn't just talk about it, but who really is about it, about having character and integrity, you know. Mm, that's, that's that's awesome, awesome, excellent. So, Gerald, what is your epic dream? <laughs> epic dream. Um, in many ways, I'm living that because. Um, I came into music as someone who, who recognized as a young man the power of music in healing and touching and moving people. And I've certainly had glimpses of that as an artist, but now in working in community, I see that I can, and in teaching, that there's a multiplier effect. So it all, it doesn't, all the healing doesn't directly have to come from me, but that I can impact others to do that work. So in that sense, my dream, that dream of touching people and moving people with music and touring and recording, that was uh, kind of small compared to what's ahead in terms of being able to move other people to do work and encourage them to do work too. So I, I still think of myself in a healer in that way. So yeah, that's the dream continues. Mm, that's beautiful. That's really beautiful. Thank, thank you. So, Gerald Beasley, question mm -hmm. number five is, who are you? Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> wow. That's, uh, that's an interesting question. Um, I am a creative. Um, I, it being a creative impacts how I think and how I approach the world and how I approach solving problems and how I even recast problems as a puzzle or puzzles to be figured out. Um, it moves me in terms of being able to be positive and optimistic when I kind of have that framework about how uh, I forget who said this, but that it's all invented that many of the things that we take for, for granted as being absolutely 100% correct and that there are no other ways of looking at situations and circumstances, that there are inventions that we accept. And so being a creative person means that, you know, I'm willing to look beyond the obvious. I'm willing to sit with problems. I'm willing to, to pull apart things and see if there's something deeper. Um, and, it, and, um, and it's taken me a while to embrace that, you know, it really has, even though that's who I am, it's taken me a while to really understand how important it is to embrace that creative spirit, you know, because I want to be so many things, but at, at heart, that's who I am. Got it. That's awesome. So awesome. So here we are already at question six, which is, is there anything you wanted me to ask that I didn't, or I should have asked that I didn't? In other words, what did I miss? Ooh, what did you miss? These are some great questions. I don't know that you missed anything. I think um, if I could leave one more thing for since the I'm, I'm 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 so pleased with how you cast this whole project as a repository um if i wanted to make a deposit into the repository it would be to um young brothers to be encouraged that the very fact that you are discouraged is by design the fact that you may feel hopeless at times first of all that's a human condition we all be we people of every stripe can become discouraged. Um, but there's a particular issue around our people being discouraged because we have this weight and this burden that's been carried through for centuries. And it's no fault of your own if you're a young man listening to this. But your responsibility is to, number one, first thing in the first job in the morning is to encourage yourself. That's the first job. And, um, I'm a spiritual person. I believe in the power of prayer. So if you don't have a God, find one. Because there are going to be times when the things that you believe in are not going to be big enough. And you need something bigger than yourself. And so those are the things I would kind of 
if I could make a deposit in this just fantastic, meaningful project is for young brothers to, to be encouraged and um, to know that, um, that what you have to offer in your time here, no one else can. No one else can. Wow. That's, that's beautiful. That is so incredibly beautiful. Thank you so much, Cheryl. I, I thank you for inviting me. This has just been a wonderful time and it was so quick, but I, I just, and I, I honor you for everything that you're doing, both with this series, but also your artistry and, and being an arts leader. Um, yeah, we need, we need 10,000 like you. Well, thank you. I'm so honored by that. And I honor you, my King, for your presence in this world and your thoughtfulness and your leadership. And you know, when you teach someone, you touch so many more than, than you will ever see. And so mm -hmm. I really honor that. And I'm so grateful that you are here. And I just continue that God will continue to grow and deepen you and that your, your epic dreams come true. I loved how you framed it. It's just really wonderful. And that is my sincere hope for you. Thank so you. I really thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you God. for watching. I um, hope that you enjoyed this conversation as much as I did. And if there is a positive and successful Black man in your life that you want to see highlighted in this forum, please feel free to click the link below or in my bio, fill out the form and we'll take it from there. We're on our way to, like I said, 100 answers. We are almost there. Oh my goodness. To these six questions. And I should be clear that success does not mean what someone does for a living. You may have worldly success, um, if you will, as, as much as Gerald does. But it's really about the impact that one makes on the lives of others around them, starting with the nuclear family out to the community writ large and everything in between. Those are the brothers that we want to contribute to this narrative. And so stay tuned next week for yet another amazing King. And in the meantime, please remember to spread love and have a great day. Thanks so much. And Gerald, thank you so much. That was really awesome. Thank you, Val. Appreciate you. Hey, what were you saying? Yeah, uh, one of the things I want to acknowledge is that as men, we're often um, quiet in private, especially about the things that matter the most. We'll talk about what's, the, you know, the, the basketball game. We'll talk about this. We'll talk about that. We may talk about politics, but, but talking about things that really matter and inner things, um, it takes situations like this to pull it out of us. And so what you're doing is you're making the world richer by uh, empowering men to have those voices, even though we are powerful in other ways and we have a voice, but the, the questions that you're asking, first of all, they require introspection. And then uh, in reflecting, we also wanna be those things that we talked about, that's the integrity piece of it. But the other thing is that um, it also, just asking a man how he thinks and how he feels is an acknowledgement of how important he is in this world. Thank you so much for the job. Thank you. That was beautiful. Yeah, thank you.